Welcome back to Eli Works. Today we're going to try and see if we can alleviate the problems we're having with the Arduino shutting off. I know we tried the last video. That one was getting awfully long, so here we are again. Hopefully I have a relay showing up today. And we're going to replace the small Ardu Arduino 5 volt relay with a solid state relay that I can place further away from the control unit, probably down here low somewhere. But it seems like when I unhook the control signal from the Arduino from the plasma cutter and just hooked up this torch where I could trigger it manually without the Arduino being involved, you know, the torch over here, I was able to cut a whole part. So I ordered another relay. We're either going to use the relay that's in there and run 12 volts through it and trigger the solid state relay or we're going to change the firmware back, let Marlin turn on the D9 pin instead of pin 44 like we're using now and 9 is a 12 volt. It's normally a fan output but we might go that route. We'll just get into things, see where it takes us. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe. And hopefully we can cut some metal in this video. This is the wire we're going to use to hook that relay to. It's Allen Bradley device net cable. It's, it's shielded. So we're going to use that. So it would probably be easiest for us to just still use this relay to run out to the other relay. It also seems silly to have a redundant relay in there. So I think I might take that one out. We're going to have D9 over here power the new relay instead of using 44. I think we're going to eliminate all that stuff just to eliminate unneeded parts. I tried to only buy marine heat shrink that has the glue in it, but for most of this stuff, it doesn't really matter that much. So down in there, that silver plug behind the other black plug is the USB cable that you plug in the Arduino. I'm not sure I have enough room to get my cable in there, which I didn't really think about when I made the box, so I might blast a little hole in the back of this box. So I can plug my USB cable in. I guess I didn't really think about reflashing it while it was attached. So I'm going to go ahead and change my pin 44 back to D9. I showed how to do that in a previous video. I'm just going to tin these couple wires. That way they get gripped a little better when you clamp them down. Anytime they're stranded wire, I feel like it's best to tin it before you clamp it in something. There, I think that's ready to plug into a laptop. See if we can load the right firmware. Compile it. I already went into the ramps pins folder and changed 44 back to 9. Alright, sketch compiled. Upload. Uploading the sketch. First time it failed. I, I don't know why. I just tried it again. Well, it says it's done. Hopefully it's the right one. Now I'll blast a hole in the back here so we can put the wire in. and That way I can hook the computer up to it when it's together.
All right. We got power. D9 is hooked up to our relay output. So be careful with these pins, you know. You are apt to bend the ever living shit out of them. I think I kind of missed the mark on that connector. I don't want to drop a bunch of filings in there. And I don't want to take it back apart. I think I've decided that this box is just a test box. We're going to remake it. Cause now I have something to get all my dimensions off of. You have those wires hook up to D9, go over to my connector. That's going to go from our connector. Go to the solid state relay that I bought. We're going to mount that somewhere away from the Arduino. And hopefully this takes care of it and isolates the signal from screwing things up. I got this solid state relay off of Amazon. It's like nine or it was like ten dollars with tax. It says 25 amps. Uh, the input's three to 32 volts DC. And on the output side, you can have five to 60 volts DC. And I think the signal on the plasmas. It read 25.6 volts, so you know we're well within that. And it shouldn't be really any amperage. Comes on a huge heat sink, which I'm not sure I need. But we'll just leave it on there. Came with it. So we come out of the Arduino box. And I have it pins 1 and 2 on the connector. And you can wire yours direct. But those go to the cable. And the cable will run. So this will be pin 1, the plus. And pin 2 is our negative. So plus and negative on input. We're going to have a 12 volt supply. There's a positive and a negative on that signal wire. So it will hook up to these positive and negative. That signal wire, I just took this switch. It's just a contact switch. There's just two wires running in there. I snipped them off the switch. And those two wires are what hook up to that. So it hooks up to the contact side of the relay. So just right out of here and into there. And I just used my multimeter to check the polarity. So I can hook it up properly. So I should probably make sure this works before I button it all back up, huh? I'm just going to go ahead and start like that program that I've run in the past. And then I'm going to put my multimeter. I think it's working. We'll just have to hook it up and try it. I'm not sure I need any of this wire mesh on the front anymore. But we are going to wait until we get a successful test before we eliminate any precautions. Right? If you guys see Key and Anderson, can you guys let him know that he owes me a 30 pack of pop? Pull the doofus out of the ditch. Says he'll pay you back. Huh. I'm gonna die before that happens. Alright, got this cable. Yeah, so positive 25 volts. So number one is the hot wire. All right, number one happens to be the red wire. Cool. The red wire. Is positive and the green wire is negative. We're going to hook it up just like that on this side. Positive and negative to power on the other side. Another end. 
All right, we've tested and proved that the red wire was the positive. <clears throat> tested and proved the red wire was the positive. These cheap soldering irons that they just stick a name on, the tips don't last very long. I'm on my second tip pretty much just in this project. So you might be better off investing in better equipment if you're going to do it more than once. This looks like it makes too much sense to go well. Now we're going to set that away from the box. Just so you can see what this thing is doing. Just running that little test program. And when that red light's on, it's supposed to be cutting. And it shuts off, turns on, you know. Yeah, and it's just, you can't really tell, but it's just running a program. So, before I tried to get this relay, I also wrapped all the exposed wires in foil tape. You know, grounded the motors, as you saw. So, tried shielding that more. I tried putting the plasma cutter outside, and I tried grounding extra stuff try grounding the table to where my service comes in I feel like I'm on to something there we're gonna find out Well, I would declare that a success. It's not very pretty, but definitely something we can work upon. I'll take it. We have a bunch of slag to deal with, but I've never really fooled with plasma cutters, speeds and feeds. I've only ran lasers. We'll figure it out. <laughs>